today we are going to discuss on the topic transport of materials across the cell membrane so in this topic we'll be discussing about various transport mechanisms through which the materials enter and exit the cell so we all know that the food that we consume is digested in our digestive system it is absorbed into the blood the blood transports and delivers those nutrients to the cells the cells in turn accept them utilize or use them to produce energy energy is stored in the form of atp adenosine triphosphate and waste materials are of course formed after the metabolic activities of the cell this energy that is produced is what we are using for various body activities so two questions arise over here the first one is how do the cells accept those nutrients into it that is how do they permit their entry and the second question is how do these cells eliminate those waste materials into the blood so the answer for these two questions are what we are discussing in this topic when we speak about transport mechanisms the first thing that should come into our mind is the plasma membrane like the skin of our body that protects the underlying organs the plasma membrane is the skin of the cell so it is the limiting membrane and it is only through that membrane the materials can enter and exit the cell the speciality of plasma membrane is that it is highly selective or very specific it has got certain set of rules and regulations and they strictly follow those rules and regulations they do not permit the entry and exit of everything each and everything present in the blood or inside the cell only those that have got permission can enter and exit that is why it is called a selectively permeable membrane the chemical composition of plasma membrane is lipids and proteins lipids being the major composition or constituent so it is through this lipid and protein layers the materials enter in and exit the cell so this is the structure of plasma membrane with the lipid and protein layers now what is the importance or what is the necessity of the transportation of materials it is necessary to maintain the cell functions because only if the nutrients are transported into the cells the cells can utilize them to produce energy with which we perform the body functions and it is only through this transport mechanism the waste materials that is produced inside the cell can be eliminated what happens if the waste materials get accumulated inside the cell it will definitely cause serious issues so in order to prevent all those things and for the proper functioning of the cells transport mechanisms are very important and the routes through which the materials move in and out are the lipid layer and the membrane proteins so some materials go for the lipid layer while others go for the protein layer only those materials or those molecules that are lipid soluble can cross the lipid layer or move through the lipid layer and the non lipid molecules go for the protein layer for their movement now what are the transport mechanisms the main thing we are going to discuss there are two transport mechanisms the first one is passive transport and the second one is active transport so in this picture we can see a girl swinging on a swing but you can see one more thing or you can observe it that she is swinging on her own there is no external force or pressure 
that's what passive transport means that is in passive transport there is no need of an external energy or external force for the movement of materials while in the second picture you can see that a person is pushing the girl to swing on the swing right so that means she requires an external force she requires a push from her back for the movement of the swing that means in active transport an external force or pressure is required for the movement of materials so that's the concept and we'll move on to the main thing so what is passive transport it is the type of transport that doesn't require energy it is not necessary energy is not necessary for the movement of materials it is also known as downhill movement and is divided into three types as simple diffusion facilitated diffusion and osmosis so what is simple diffusion simple diffusion is the movement of particles or molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration so it is in order to maintain an equilibrium between the two parts so the molecules move from higher to lower area that is along the electrochemical or concentration gradient it is along the flow it is with the flow that's why it doesn't require any energy so the movement of particles occurs until equilibrium is attained now diffusion of gases like oxygen carbon dioxide etc occur through the lipid layer of plasma membrane because the gases are lipid soluble that's why they go for the lipid layer whereas diffusion of ions ions are charged particles it occurs through the ion channels so ion channels are the integral transmembrane proteins involved in the transport of inorganic ions like sodium ions potassium ions calcium ions etc and these ion channels are of two types gated channels and non gated or open or leakage channels so this picture shows the diffusion of various materials through the lipid and protein layer so carbon dioxide oxygen then steroid hormones etc they diffuse through the lipid layer because all of them are lipid soluble whereas water it is a non lipid material so it moves through the integral proteins the specialized integral proteins for the movement of water are called aquaporins this is yet another picture showing the same thing so open or leakage channels as the name indicates they are very open there is no restriction for the movement of any sort of ion but the ion channels are also very specific that is for example here i have given k plus channels that means potassium channels so the potassium leakage channels they are very open they are always open there is no restriction so k plus ions potassium ions can easily move in and out of the cell through these leakage channels there is no restriction but they are very specific that is these channels are exclusively for k plus ions no other ions can move through this channel there is specificity in these ion channels anyway leakage channels are open channels are channels without any restrictions then gated channels as the name indicates there is a gate or there is a guardian through which the ions cannot easily enter inside so they open upon a stimulus application only and they are of three types voltage gated ligand gated and mechanically gated channels voltage gated channels are ion specific and they allow the permeation of only one type of ion like some voltage gated channels 
are for sodium ion so they are called sodium voltage gated channels then calcium voltage gated channels etc there are certain gated channels like that so the movement of ions through those voltage gated channels lead to the development of membrane potential membrane potential is actually a sort of voltage fluctuation or electrical fluctuation across the membrane that helps in various physiological processes like transduction of signals muscle contraction motility etc so these voltage gated channels open only when there is any change in the electrical activity across the cell then ligand gated channels they are less selective and allows the entry of two or more types of ions through them and those channels open upon binding of neurotransmitters so what are neurotransmitters they are certain chemicals released by the neurons they are some sort of messengers they transmit signals from one neuron to the next so these ligand gated channels they are for the neurotransmitters so they open when one neurotransmitter binds on it so when the neurotransmitter bind on the ligand gated ligand gated channels the channel open and two or more ion sometimes a single ion or more than one type of ion may enter and exit through these channels and mechanically gated channels they open upon some sort of mechanical stimulations for example when we exert pressure on the membrane so due to that pressure stimulation some channels may open and the ions may enter or exit the cells such type of gated channels are called mechanically gated channels and this picture shows various types of channels the first one is ligand gated channels with the neurotransmitter on it so when it attaches to the channels the channel open and ions enter inside then mechanically gated channels when pressure is applied leakage channels or open channels which are always open without any sort of restrictions and the next one is voltage gated channels that open upon some sort of electrical stimulation then comes the second type that is facilitated diffusion facilitated diffusion is the diffusion of materials with the help of carrier proteins it's unlike channels they are carrier proteins so the diffusion of chloride ions water etc occurs through this type of diffusion so what is the difference between a channel and a carrier protein or what are the differences between channel proteins and carrier proteins so channel proteins are pores or openings for charged ions to pass through they open to both the intracellular as well as the extracellular environments allowing free passage of molecules they don't have any binding site and allows the passage of millions of ions at a time and it transports the substances passively that is channel proteins they are very open sometimes voltage gated but still they are very open but at the same time the carrier proteins they bind to larger molecules they change the shape of the molecules so that the molecules can pass through them they are not open simultaneously to both the intracellular as well as extracellular environments they either open to the inner side or to the outer side they of course have binding sites and have the ability to allow the passage of very few molecules at a time 
they recognize only one substance or a group of similar substances and the transportation through the carrier proteins may be active or passive so these are the channel and carrier proteins channel proteins they are very open they connect both the external and internal environments but carrier proteins they are not that open they will be either opening to the exterior part only or to the interior part only and when the materials move through them the materials will have to change their shape it's not a permanent change but still in order to move through that protein they'll have to adjust themselves so changing shape is necessary in the case of carrier protein transportation and the last type is osmosis osmosis is the movement of solvent from a region of lower solute concentration to a region of higher solute concentration through a semi permeable membrane and the pressure exerted by solute molecules on the membrane is called osmotic pressure so the semi permeable membrane permits the pas passage of only water or other solvents but not the solutes osmosis can occur whenever there is a difference in solute concentration on either side of the membrane so this much about passive transport thank you